What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at one of my favorite mini PCs of 2024. And some of you might remember that we've already taken a look at this. Now I took a look at it in its stock form. It does come pre-installed with Windows and this is known as the Morphine M6. They're relatively inexpensive over on Amazon. I'll leave some links down below. But since making my first video, I had a lot of people asking about Linux. And within the last week, I've actually been experimenting with a few different distros. And I'll tell you, this does make a really awesome, super small form factor Linux machine. Now, the first thing you might notice is just how small this thing really is. It's actually not much bigger than an iPhone 15 Pro Max. We do have quite a bit of I.O. when you consider its form factor. And it's not the most powerful mini PC on the market, but we've got a pretty stout CPU with the new upgrades for Morphine because this is actually utilizing the Intel N200. When you compare it to the N100 mini PCs on the market, I mean, this definitely blows it out of the water. We've got a much higher boost clock and a better iGPU. And inside of the box, what we're gonna get here is our 36 volt USB Type-C power supply and the M6 mini PC. But I gotta say, one of my favorite things about this is the fact that it actually supports two M.2 SSDs. So you could leave Windows alone and dual boot into Linux. For me, I just used a single 512 gigabyte drive here with Linux installed on it. But if you wanted to, we've got dual M.2 SSD slots. This is not a totally silent mini PC. It's actually got a built-in fan, but even at full boat, it's not that loud. And when it comes to the overall specs, like I mentioned, this is utilizing the Intel N200. And with this, we get four cores, four threads, with a max clock up to 3.7 gigahertz, built-in Intel UHD graphics with 32 execution units up to 750 megahertz, 16 gigabytes of onboard LPDDR5 at 4,800 megahertz, two M.2 NVMe slots, Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2. And if you're interested in checking this thing out with Windows installed on it, I'll leave a link to that video I created. But for this one, we've got a variant of Linux that, you know, I've used in the past. So this is Pop! OS. It's based on Ubuntu. And as you can see, it's actually a really nice user interface. Everything's pretty much customizable. Once you install it, you can set up this uh, app panel down here to go across. You can set it up to the left or the right. I've got kind of the floating dock here. Show applications. Does have a few things pre-installed, basic stuff. We've got a calculator, a full office suite here using LibreOffice. System, we can access all of our disks, USB, system monitor. Heading back to home, I'll show you from settings. As you can see, 16 gigs of RAM with this and the Intel N200. So yeah, 512 gigabyte M.2 SSD that I've installed here. Latest version of Pop! OS, obviously 64-bit. Super easy to upgrade and recover the operating system. And again, I went back and forth with what operating system to kind of show off on this thing. Originally, it was Manjaro, and that does work out really well. But for ease of use, if you're just getting into it, I'd say Pop! OS is one of the easiest, and it's actually a really good-looking interface. For the Linux power users, not a problem to install anything from Terminal here. Just go with NeoFetch. Just gives us some information on what's going on here. N200 up to 3.7 gigahertz. Now it's not the most powerful CPU on the market, but given the form factor and price, I think it does a really good job for everyday tasks. Now, if you're not a Linux power user, totally fine. We've got the Pop Shop. Super easy way to update and install new applications. From the little drop down here, updates and installed software. So I've gone through and installed a couple emulators and I've also installed Steam here. But if you're looking for something, you can always search from the top. We'll just go with GIMP. I've already got it installed. Basically free Photoshop works out really well on this little system. And if you're not exactly sure what you wanna use, I mean, we've got sections here. So finance, internet, education. We'll head over to education real quick. It's just gonna give us a list of apps in the education section. And there's quite a few to install. Everything here is free to use. Games, right here. So with something like this, we're not going to find like Cyberpunk under games. You can install Steam, which we've got installed here. Amiberry, lots of different emulators that you can install directly from the pop shop. So yeah, I mean, it's just a really nice operating system to kind of get started with Linux. Easy to navigate. If you boot this up and you've ever used a Mac or even a Windows machine, not a problem to know exactly what's going on here. Everything's labeled for you. Nice little animations. And when it comes to everyday use case performance, like web browsing, 
You can install basically any browser you want. It does come pre-installed with Firefox, but I've loaded up Google Chrome here because with 4K video playback, I just noticed better performance here. We'll head over to Pop OS. This does have Wi-Fi 6 built in, and you can download the operating system from here. They do offer this for the Raspberry Pi 4, but I'll tell you, this mini PC has so much more power than the Raspberry Pi 4 or 5. It is coming in a little more expensive, but when you think about, you know, the Raspberry Pi 5 at 100 bucks or $89, 8 gigs of RAM, you can find this mini PC regularly over on Amazon for about 140 with a coupon. I think it's 199 base price, but there's always coupons floating around. I do think it would be worth getting something like this over that. We got an x86 CPU and 4K playback. We'll just head over to YouTube because a lot of people are going to be watching videos on their uh, desktop. Just go with a 4K demo. It does look like my game capture is cutting the bottom off a little bit. On my real monitor, it looks fine. 4K, 60 FPS, HDR, one drop frame. So in Windows, I've noticed that, you know, using the Edge browser or even Chrome, we see some good 4K playback on this N200. It is boosting up, not quite the 3.7. And even though this does have a built-in fan, you cannot hear this mini PC. I mean, it is super quiet. I was even experimenting with a little bit of photo editing on this machine using GIMP. Just load it up. And I do have an image here. Not sure. There we go. Basic photo editing, retouching, everything like that is available. And you can definitely make GIMP look like Photoshop. If you check out one of Nova Spirit Tech's new videos, he shows you exactly how to make GIMP look like Photoshop. It's actually pretty cool. I'll just go with a little bit of saturation here. And we'll export as, let's do PNG, right to the desktop. Got our photo here. I could probably go ahead and set this as my background. I mean, just real basic right now. You can go cut, paste all through that. It does have basically all the features that Photoshop has. Another thing I wanted to show off here was a little bit of gaming and emulation. So we're not going to be running high-end 4K AAA games, but there are a lot of games over on Steam that we can actually play. And we're going to be using Proton just like we would on the Steam Deck. And real quick, to get this running, you're going to go to your Steam settings, compatibility, and you want to enable Steam Play for all other titles. Check that. Now you have to reboot. So with that enabled, we've got access to many more games that we can play here. And keep in mind, going into big picture mode from the top right here, it's going to give us that Steam Deck interface. So this is what I call gamepad UI mode. Same thing we've got on the Steam Deck, so it's super easy to navigate with a controller from your couch. You can also use a keyboard. I usually have Steam set up to automatically go into big picture mode on these Linux machines, and we're going to go with Skyrim. FPS is up in the top left-hand corner. We're at 900p low settings with OG Skyrim, and it does run at a constant 60 FPS like this. I tried medium, but we were down in the lower 50s. And I mean, you could definitely play it like that, but we're working with a very low end CPU. It's pretty amazing that we're able to do this anyway. I also tested out Hades 2, not a super hard game to run, but we are at 1080 medium with this game. And at high, I did see it dip down a bit when there were lots of characters on screen, but at medium, constant 60 throughout with this N200. And the final thing I wanted to show off here was some emulation. And from the pop shop, you can go GameCube running with Dolphin, just using an Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth, Auto Modalista, which I consider a harder one to run. We're using the Vulcan back in, 1x resolution, but I think we can go up to 2x with this. So if we go to our settings here, graphics, and yeah, I'm pretty sure it's going to run really well. So with this mini PC running Windows, I'm using the DirectX 11 backend, but it does seem that Linux with Vulkan and most of the emulators that I've tested so far do run a lot smoother at these higher resolutions. But yeah, I mean, it's a pretty interesting little system, especially with Linux installed. And in my opinion, it's well worth picking something like this up if you're looking for a small form factor PC. So yeah, overall, I'm actually really impressed with the performance that the M6 is putting out. And keep in mind, Morefine does make a couple variants of this. 
You can pick this up with the N100, but what we have here is the more powerful N200. And in my opinion, it's well worth the price. We've got a more powerful 32 execution unit GPU here. If you're interested in learning a little more about the M6, I'll leave some links in the description. You can pick it up from Amazon or their website. And if you want to get Pop! OS up and running on basically any of your x86 PCs, I'll leave a link to their official website down below. If there's any other distros you'd like to see running on this mini PC, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.